Hey there, DIY enthusiasts! Welcome back to DIY Brovos, the channel where we turn dreams into reality with our hands, tools, and a dash of creativity. That's right! Today is going to be an exciting one because we're diving into a project that many of you have hoping for. A powder coating booth. If you've ever wanted to take your DIY game to the next level, you're in the right place. Absolutely. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, we've got you covered. We're going to guide you step by step through the process of building your very own powder coating booth right here in your garage or workshop. But before we jump in, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and ring that notification bell so you never miss out on our exciting DIY projects. And don't forget to leave us a comment below. Let us know what DIY projects you're working on, or if there's something specific you'd like to see us tackle in future videos. Your feedback keeps this DIY community thriving. Now, without further ado, let's get our hands dirty and transform this space into the ultimate powder coating haven. From materials to techniques, we've got all the insider tips you need. So grab your safety gear, dust off those tools, and join us on this DIY adventure. It's time to make some magic happen. Let's build that powder coating booth. All right, DIY Nation, let's do this. Now, folks, let's get into the nitty gritty of building the foundation for our powder coating booth, the frame. We're using 30 by 30 millimeter square tubing for this. And trust us, it's going to be sturdy and reliable. All right, with our tubes laid out and secured, we're ready to start tacking. Using a TIG welder, we're going to create those initial tack welds to hold everything together. This step is crucial to ensure that our frame stays true and square. Also fun fact, as you can imagine this welding table what we are using at the moment is also built in this same shed by us. TIG welding is perfect for this kind of precision work. It allows us to control the heat and create clean, strong welds. And remember, safety first, always wear your welding gear helmet, gloves, and appropriate clothing. Once we've tacked the tubes in place, it's time to go in and weld each seam. We're taking our time, focusing on each joint to guarantee a solid and reliable frame for our powder coating booth. Hey, before we wrap up this welding segment, we want to throw a question out to our amazing DIY community. If any of you out there have some killer tips for filming the welding arc, you know, capturing that mesmerizing dance of light, drop your wisdom in the comments below. Absolutely. Filming welding can be a bit tricky, but with the right techniques, we can turn that blinding arc into a cinematic masterpiece. Unfortunately, we did not have mastered this art yet. Actually, I am not even sure if this is possible with smartphone. As one side of the part is now welded, I lightly grind welding seams. It is just to ensure flatness when I flip the part to weld it from the other side. Now quickly snap some clamps to place and let's start welding from this side. I really like TIG welding and welding in general. I have had something with metalworks and DIY projects my entire life. I think there is a big influence from my grandfather. He is one of the greatest metal worker I personally know. There was a big chance I saw welding light from window before I could hold my head. And there was a closet where on the lowest compartment was all kind of boxes with nuts and bolts and tools. So this closet was perfectly in reach when I start crawling.
Look how much we use these quick locking clamps, and this is only one project. Clamps, specially quick locking clamps with lever mechanism, are one of the most versatile instruments in my tools library. Here we added the last part to the side frame assembly, and again simply welded it from both sides. Just take a moment and look this redneck method for tungsten grinding. And there you have it folks, two identical sides of our frame, all welded up and ready for the next step. Now begins the lower frame assembly. This part is a bit simpler, featuring only three tubes. We'll start by securing them in place with clamps, just like we've done before. Once they're snug, it's time to weld, working our way from both sides to ensure a strong and secure connection. So let's watch as these three tubes come together, step by step. Now has arrived the part where we join two side assemblies with the bottom assembly and add some more square tubes to join the frame. Let's just see how all comes together. Most of our DIY projects are planned in CAD and components are manufactured with CNC tube and sheet laser and bending press, etc. These technologies are widely available and if you master CAD program, you project get to another level really quickly. All the parts fit together perfectly, it just feels like Lego for full-grown man. And when you finish the product feels and looks like it was roll out of big factory and just like you imagined it in you head. But actually the finished project is one-off masterpiece designed to fill all the needs exactly you have. Few more final touches. For example, now we add wheels to the frame. For this, we use MIG welder. I know it's not the professional method to attach wheels to something, but as we can see, corners are cut, so let's move on. And also, little side note wheels has galvanized stands, and galvanized stuff emits toxic gases and is not meant for welding. Thank you. 
If we consider building frame for the step one, then it is finished. And now begins so-called second step, booth assembly. So we can later put already riveted both to the frame. So-called booth is made from galvanized steel, just like the one I used for oven building. All of the sheet metal parts are assembled with rivets. Oh boy, there is great amount of hand riveting. The part we are attaching right now is meant to hold four air filter. This is made from 10 millimeter steel to give mounting rigidity. Each filter mounting place has threaded hole in center where we can install threaded rods later. On the background, you can see how comes together filter air manifold. As you can see here, I also used hand bending technique. This was used because otherwise it would be difficult to bend. For easy hand bending, I made some cuts to the bend line, then little adjusting, and again, riveting. Here we assemble detachable roof. It is made from one bend sheet metal panel and two square tubes riveted together. There are also hex holes, these are for rivet nuts. If I want to attach some hooks or other hanging methods, what need thread? Now we have reached to step three. Let's join the booth with frame. Some on the go communication. Few good whack with leg and in the place it goes. Let's flip this ting to its legs now, and then we can start installing air filters. For this, we need four threaded rods with nuts installed on them. This way, we can install rods onto filter mounting part and tighten the nut against plate. It ensures the rods stay in place when we tighten the filters from other end.
For air filters, I use truck air filters, biggest and one of the cheapest I can find. These costs about 30 euros a piece and are from 11 liter diesel engine semi-truck. So let's take these final steps and install these filters and put detachable roof in place and call it the finish. As all the building is finished, let's take a quick look how it turned out. And another 100 kilograms of raw materials is turned to something useful. What a time to be alive. Just piece of PC software and some basic tools. And you can build so awesome things. So as usual, if you like, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for future videos.